you know, but I really believe that our biggest, you know, immune booster is our attitude. And I think it's hard. And that's why I didn't even want to come on and be a great pretender today. Because <laughs> attitude sometimes is hard to have. It's hard to be like, whoa, I feel great about life today when it all like challenges you, you know? Right. So right. food sometimes is a place that we go to and go, I just want something warm and makes me feel good. <laughs> Warm and makes me feel good. And you know, when, when we're boosting our immune system with our food, that's so, that's so good to do. So now my delivery service and, you know, from being a caterer and a cooking teacher, instructor and event planner and having, you know, a few clients that I would cater weekly meals for now it's, well, I can't do my cooking classes except on zoom. I can't have my catered events, but I can still cook for you. So it's my way of, you know, creating, grabbing onto this, this cloud that has this silver lining. You grab onto that silver lining and you do not let go. You find something like you two ladies have found in building this and this community. I think, you know, I, my hat's off to you and to all the women, men and women who are doing the very same thing. I think it's really, really good really really good so i love, I love that me. and i, I would love to share how lenore and i met dr gill if you don't mind me sure. sharing just that okay so, <laughs> yeah. uh, i i think you might have just started your business but i was unaware of that was was that like when it no, like, we, i was in lauderdale by the sea and we were going for i mean i had my cooking classes going and but when I met you, was that, you were fairly, I didn't know, but I think you were fairly new business, fairly right? New. That was like, what, 15 years ago? Hey, it was a while ago. <laughs> a while ago. It was a while and ago. And I met, and uh, I met Joseph trying to get my hair done and stuff. And he said he was interested in cooking and like cooking. I'm like, okay, yeah, let me put you to this challenge. I just bought tickets to this cooking school class that isn't like going to just go through the food prep and that's you get it. it's actually like a like a fun event that you learn and all these different things and so you and everybody it. enjoys right and so do you, like him, cooking, Lenore? do you enjoy teaching cooking oh, teaching I'm passionate about teaching because I love what I do so much I just love the the ins and outs and the whys and the wherefores. Do you teach online too, or do you just teach? In, I, do teach I do teach online, especially. She's, in she's shifting to that now. <laughs> it's like we all just shift to that. More shifting to that. So I do teach online, and um, I do teach a lot of. I mean, besides my cooking classes, I teach privately as well. So let's say you wanted to just know how to organize your pantry or be able to put, you know things in your pantry or in your freezer or refrigerator that if you did decide to come home and cook something, that it would be there for you. And the whole, I, the whole ecosystem that you teach, not just the actual one dish at a time. Exactly. Not just. Or like, actual. you know, oh, you got to like wash through this or take care of that this way. But actually, I just, we learned, we just, my husband and I just find, went and like got this pasta machine and made like fresh pasta because we just came ready of pasta. You know, and speaking of like kinds of machines, a lot of my clients go into these beautiful, gorgeous kitchens and they have beautiful equipment, but how do I even use my burner or use my stove? How is my oven? How do I really use a microwave? How right. do I use my Cuisinart? You know, all those little things. How do I even, you know, even knife skills? How do I hold a knife? Mm -hmm. So, and Lenore organized, besides her cooking classes that were beautiful in, in Lauderdale, uh, Lauderdale, Lauderdale by the sea. You tell me why. I just know that I bought tickets and went. If you're serious about our relationship, you and I can like, show up. <laughs> and he had cilantro all night long, and he's one of those 10% that can't handle cilantro. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you had a thing that night that was about like, we're going to do this cruise. Right. So then you all came on a cruise with me, which is we like signed up that night <laughs> for your cruise that we did such a great experience. Right. Of my husband and I got engaged mm -hmm. on a volcano in a vineyard. <laughs> you 
and then he for crying it. in that vineyard. And he proposed to me, and I was like, are you serious? Like, in front of all these people? And Lenore knew about it, and she was such a part of our, my husband. Right. And Absolutely. My Absolutely. And, uh, Did she do the it's her secret together? ingredient that, like, <laughs> brought that all together. Her, so. Oh, I did not cater their wedding, Dr. Gill. I did not cater their but wedding. But you did, because they went, oh, the place you went to that wouldn't let you, but you right. did attend no. their wedding. <laughs> that was great. It was really a beautiful ceremony. It was really beautiful. So you know, what, and, uh, how, do, how do people improve their cooking at home? Because a lot of us are now not eating out as much as we used to. And so what, what, how do you teach people who like open the fridge and like, ah, what do I do? <laughs> like, you know, the first thing that I really want to say is that you have to cook with careless abandon. You okay. cannot be fearful <laughs> of something coming out perfect. Perfection does not exist in the food world. This tomato, this eggplant, this lemon is not the same as the one I had yesterday, nor will it be the same as the one I have tomorrow. So I think that whenever you decide that you're going to cook anything, that's your first start of success. And I think everything that you make, is, are you're going to find you can make something one day, and, and if you're not really using a recipe, and sometimes you will be using a recipe, that it can turn out a little differently each and every time. And yeah. that's okay because we're not eating processed foods. Things that are in a box are going to taste identical every single time. But you don't. Imperfection want... is perfect. It's... Imperfection is perfect. You're right, Pamela. And so... that's why I'm like, I'm just not going to try it perfect right now. Today. It's really, think it really simple. Um, yeah. One thing I do, and when we kind of open up again, um, I really love Trader Joe's. I think they have great products, mm -hmm. and I think they have great convenience products like a delicious curry sauce that I always get from there so which, one, which one? I, I love I love curry sauce which one? I bet you do I do um I'll have to find out what the name of it is Heather can you bring me that um curry sauce thanks well while Lenora's saying that I'm going to tell you when Joseph and I went into this like recent like I'm like, listen, this is how we got together. We, Lenore has now grown into a bigger, bigger, bigger business and is right on the Gulf Mile or whatever that's called. I don't know what that's called down there, but your place is beautiful. And some of the things that you had that night and all the people that were there and you honored us and thank you, but like, she's not afraid to share other people's like things with no intent to gain. And it's so awesome to go and like, that's the like this thing is that I we love. need to I make want, this I good. Share that. So yeah. I, and I would love for you, I want you both to join me when all this kind of gets up and running again. Yeah. I do a Trader Joe's field trip because <gasps> there are so many wonderful products <laughs> and we go there. Thank you so much. I, I, I want to, if I could, if I'm going to step, can I step oh, away for a moment? It's I step away for a moment and like somehow get on my camera and or, like and show you what's on my countertop that yes. I got. Yeah, you guys keep talking because you gave us so many things and I keep this right here and we've been making pasta. And just come right <laughs> so, down. Dr. Gill, will you ask um, Lenore? Yes. The so, so for I'm if gonna... you go to Trader Joe's, then how, what's your method of attack through Trader Joe's? To okay. So we meet outside and we just, we gather just a few minutes before the store actually opens. They're so kind and generous to me. And we go in and basically there's, I, I limit the class to about 12 and we walk down the aisles and people that come to the class usually have shopped there. They are inquisitive about certain items that they've looked at, but people don't tend to buy things if they don't know what the flavor profile is going to be or how they can use it. So we go down the aisles and everybody gets to choose two things that I purchased for them. And then we come back to my store and my school and I have all the proteins and the vegetables and things like that. And we just cook, no recipe cooking. We just oh, use the ingredients that we all bring and it is delightful and delicious. Oh, you got your pasta machine. <laughs> I did. I got a pasta machine. And we've been making pasta. And I need to figure out how to share this. And I don't have any idea. I'm not promoting this company at all. But after the night that we went there, like, you learn things. And Lenore's not. Then, yeah, we, she, they came to the pasta. 
class. The chicken dish, three chicken dishes with pasta. It was oh, amazing. Right. And so I was like, I'm ordering a pasta. And it's on my counter. And everybody who came before COVID over here was like. That's right. If you're coming over, the perfect hostess gift for you is flour, water, and egg. We can make some <laughs> pasta. <laughs> And it's so much fun. So, so Pamela, what 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 di what's the dish that you make? Your favorite dish that you learned from Lenore? What 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 dish do you make when you like? There is no way I can choose because uh, there is nothing I've ever like had that didn't give me great pleasure <laughs> from food that her like we've made. Oh, yeah. and, uh, what I teach is what I love, and what I teach I mm. want it to be accessible for you. I'm not going to create a recipe that you're not going to be able to make and be successful making. And it right. will, you know, you're just going to enjoy it. Cooking is about having fun. It's about bringing your family and friends together. One of my favorite um, recipes and cooking classes is risotto. And I love risotto. And it's about the stirring and the stirring and the stirring. And you stir so much, you get to have that extra glass of wine and you're stirring and stirring and stirring. <laughs> It's right. attention, which we all want. You gotta like pay attention. It's a right. great, it's a great dish to have when you have a dinner party. Because why should you do all the stirring? Mm -hmm. Rather, your friends into the kitchen. It's your turn to do the figure eight, and it's your turn to do the figure eight. And everybody has this community, and everybody ends up in the kitchen anyway because yeah. it's everyone's favorite place to be. So you know that's I I like cooking because it it it's about. I think friends and family and lovers that cook together stay together. I wish I could have a video of what your announcement was at Joseph and I's engagement at that venue because <laughs> I don't it, know. It, it, was, it was it was it, that was a while ago. I know, and it was it was I don't even know exquisitely perfectly. Worded. Well, so, I love to talk about the people that I love. So you and Joseph are two of them. And the, but what the passion within the food was exactly within the passion within well, a, I'll a tell relationship. You, it, is, it is truly my passion and my pleasure yeah. to cook for people. So and, you know, during not, this time, it, during this time when it has been so stressful for so many people. Um, so and many of my, I have met so many wonderful, because I'm right on the Galt Ocean Mile. I have all these beautiful condominiums that are just on the other side of the street from me, you know, and they are a lot of people that I have met during this pandemic mm -hmm. that I may not have met otherwise, because they come to me to see if I can cook meals for them, which I'm doing. And a lot of them, I have a list of delicious meals that you can choose from. I also create menus that are specific to anyone's um, allergies or dietary concerns. Right. And so, so am I understanding this right? There's two ways of doing this. One, you can learn to cook from you, or two, you can order order the meals that you want. Is, is Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And so, so people, can people order from your website right now? Can they go? Yes, right now. Right now. They can look at the website and they can give us a call and we can take the order and we deliver or curbside pickup. And, and that is the beautiful thing about Lenore is that she's shifting her love to, that wasn't your business model before. <laughs> Mine was, you know, catered events and catered right. for many right. of my clients on a weekly basis. But now it's, um, and I'm doing it, you know, kind of like the, the meal delivery service places. So it's, and I but a trusted place is, that you know it's being handled the right way. <laughs> I deliver, you know, my food comes to you cold. I don't want to deliver hot food because I cannot maintain the integrity of anything that I am presenting to you that's hot. That's it's a great point for, for like uh, these days when bacteria can grow and things and, and you, exactly. it, it's, um, so well, should people order like a couple of days worth of food at a time? Exactly. Or I suggest ordering, I suggest ordering a couple of days. I guarantee my um, dishes will last three days. I suggest if we're doing fish, um, that you do um, use it the first or second day because I think fish has just uh, something that is not as uh, palatable after it, it's been cooked for a couple of days. So th these dishes are fully cooked or do they come like ingredients? No, they are fully cooked and they're beautiful. You can go online and see how beautiful they are. 
and they're delicious and love is the main ingredient. <laughs> oh, you're not supposed to tell everybody that secret. <laughs> Lenora has like, I, I mean, because love is the main ingredient. You don't have, it's like, she is not a huge like company that's doing like everybody can order online. She's just shifting to serve with her heart and taking like, hey, here's the menu this week. Come on here. These are the beautiful things that we can offer you and you can, and it's affordable. My God, I went to look at the prices. I'm like, I can't even go to the grocery store and not only get those ingredients, but Right. Add it for that price <laughs> and have it. Well, what areas do you deliver to? Like we live in West. Um, I, well, I deliver. I have clients in Boynton. I have clients in Delray. I have clients in Miami and out west. So I'm really all. You know, it started more locally as Fort Lauderdale, but I do my catering clients are Tri County. So you know, when people call. My answer is I never say no and I never close. Right. You just have to say yes. You need food. I can deliver. And you're, um, uh, I didn't, I know I asked you to put this whole list together. <laughs> what? And Dr. Gill, you're probably going to go Pam again, but like life, life brings us like I, ne a I never panic. Right? I never panic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not panicking. At least I have internet today. So, um, Lenore, like basically you you take what you have access to resources of the ingredients that the average individual right now does not have access to and the average individual does not have expertise in what is required to make sure that we have uh the cleanliness or <laughs> yeah I mean what the yeah. chef certification all that stuff that needs to make yeah, sure I mean, that I mean, all of my all of my chefs are serve safe certified yeah. and we take special care in the cleanliness of product becoming into my into my kitchen and then in the delivery vehicles as well it's all extremely important it's because it's your heart and your soul and you won't compromise. And that's why Dr. Gill and I are, have a line because like, we won't compromise our foundational beliefs. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell, tell me um, if, if I'm like going to the grocery store, get, get, walk me through an easy meal that, that our listeners can, can just do. An so, easy meal that your listeners can do. And using vegetables. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think that probably let's get some zucchini, some yellow squash, right? Some carrots. I feel right. very guilty picking out carrots, zucchini, and <laughs> and uh, uh, squash. One zucchini, no blemishes. Cucumber. One yellow squash, no blemishes. One carrot, no blemishes, right? Okay. Okay, so those, let's do that. Let's have, and let's put some onion in there. And one, let's do the sweet Vidalia onion. Okay, when you're cooking things, Ladies and gentlemen, size matters, right? Right here. Okay. And we're looking at that in the grocery store. I'm like, yes, size when does matter. <laughs> when you're chopping and slicing and dicing. So you've got those four vegetables on your cutting board, right? And you're going to cut them. Is bigger better? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, so I, like, I, like, I like more uniform in size. But you, when you get them on your, but when you get them on your cutting board and you're going to cut them and you're going to saute them, we're going to do a really quick stir fry, let's say, right? So we're going to do a really quick stir fry. So we've got onion, zucchini, carrots, and if you've got some bok choy that you see there, you can throw that in or some spinach, some fresh spinach at the end to not really cook it, but you're going to relax it. You're going to wilt it. So you're going to take the onion, maybe you're going to cut it in a one inch dice. You're gonna cut the zucchini and the yellow squash, same size, one inch dice. Those have a lot of water content, okay? So they're gonna cook really quickly. But a carrot is more dense, so you're gonna cut that a little thinner because you, all, you want it to be palatable, right? You want it to be the same really texture and consistency doing the same kind of saute. We love garlic, so we're gonna chop some garlic and throw that in. But we're not gonna add the garlic first because garlic is gonna burn a lot quicker. So we're going to put the onion in first. It's going to release some of its water. So you've got a skillet. Turn the skillet on. Let the skillet get hot. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil. All right. I, yeah. And I learned something. I learned something so essential from you. 
that with the whole like garlic thing, like we put it in there and the oil and all these things, and if it starts turning brown, it it's a bitter, like you don't it's want that bitter. burned garlic yeah. situation. That's why if you put the onion in first, so the onion, you put the onion in first, mm -hmm. a minute, maybe 30 seconds, then you add your garlic. <laughs> And yeah. you keep it moving, keep it moving in that pan. Saute literally means to jump in the pan. Stir fry means to jump, right? So you're literally moving it. Move it with that spatula. Move it with that wooden spoon, right? It's fun. Do, 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 do. It is, First, do, especially when you've got wine. So can I ask you this? And I don't know if it's on your list of questions, but it is a concern because we're getting all these vegetables. When we go to the grocery store, my head's going, oh my God, so many people have touched these items with their hands. Well, you've got to come home and wash your vegetables, right? So, but if you wash your vegetables and then put them in a pan of a certain heat, it doesn't kill that? Yes, it does. So you're gonna do both things. So okay. now that the onion is cooked, you've thrown the garlic in, now we've got the zucchini and the yellow squash. And you know, cooking is also about hearing. So I put that in there and I want it to go, I want to hear that little sizzle. So then I put that in there and I want to turn it down a little bit because I really want to relax and cook the vegetables. I'm not interested in browning them. So another couple of minutes, you can see, then you throw in your carrots, another couple of minutes and you've got something, you're going to be start smelling it. You'll see that it's really cooking the way you want it to. And you can add that to anything like quinoa, like pasta. If you want to put spinach into it, throw the spinach in. Go I ahead. Flavor it to get it that, that, you know, the flavoring is where like. Some well, you've got the garlic. You're definitely salting and peppering at oh, the end. Okay. All right. Now, everybody says, well, how much salt, how much pepper? I guarantee that you know when you're, when you have a plate of scrambled eggs in the morning, you don't think about, is it a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon? You know exactly how much salt and pepper you like on it, right? Same thing. It's Lenore goes that much. <laughs> it's, like, well. it's, the it's the circumference and it's the depth. Remembering one thing, you can always add more in, but once you put it in, you cannot take it out. So you do, you you don't you're not a big proponent of these like different sauces that you can use with the with the well, stuff. If I was going to, if I had all of that and I just made this today for a customer, I use some of this when I had and I also had some tofu in it, right? And so I just splashed a little bit of that and, and that is at the end. Once you get all your vegetables and they're just tasting just the way you want them to, the texture is right, then you throw in that sauce, turn your heat off, swirl it around, you can smell it, you can taste it, you own it. What about- Isn't that what life's all about? What about adding some like protein or some like noodles or something? When do you do that? Well, you have your noodles or your quinoa or your protein. Let's just say if you're adding noodles or quinoa or brown rice or, or any kind of grain like that, all right, you're already gonna have that cooked. So that's gonna be on the side. So again, I would throw that in just before I throw in that spinach, okay. just to warm it so it's already cooked. Now, if I was doing, let's say I had some little beautiful pieces of um, cod. I made this the other day, some pieces of cod. So I would brown the cod first, take it out, let it rest and let it be just sitting as I'm sauteing those vegetables. And then as I finish with the spinach and I finish with the um, sauce, like that little bit of curry sauce, then I would slip, not break it all up, but just slip those pieces of cod right into the pan swirl it around, maybe cover it for five minutes, and it's gonna be perfectly cooked. Because I've only browned the pieces of the fish or the chicken. So the chicken and the fish is the same. You just brown it first, put it to the side, then chop it up, and at the end, after exactly. the curry sauce, you, you add the, the chicken. Right, so that all those flavors marry and are infused. And I mean, with that, you can add, like if you like ginger, you're gonna squirt in some ginger, right? When you're cooking with your garlic, When if you like, um, you know, if you like some herbs de Provence or um, just remember one thing that dried herbs go in the beginning because they're dry. So you need to break the, the seal of that dryness with the oil and fresh herbs go in at the end. So if I had beautiful fresh basil, I would throw that in at the end so I could get that flavor. If you put fresh ingredients in at the beginning, you've lost it by the time you eat, you're eating your dish. You know, can I just also share, because I just like, Lenore, I love you to death, and you've taught me something. 
I've all like the fresh herbs, like rosemary and things like that. I was always like, oh, this is such work to get like the old little pieces off the stem. Here's a little, flavor. here's a little tip for you. Like when I make, <laughs> if I was making this dish that we just talked about and I wanted to infuse it with rosemary, I don't really want to have those little sticks of rosemary in my teeth. But what I can do is take that whole branch, right? Throw the branch in as I'm doing the sauteing and then take that branch out. And then take out. the branch out. And you put the whole thing in there, give it the flavor, and then take it out. I'm taking it out. so many great tips. And I'm signing up for your cooking classes. This and, and, and there's one more thing I want to, well, there's two, probably two more things I want to add that have been like such amazing cooking tips that I, I keep like standing by meat <laughs> like steak oh the best way to like really treat what you're cooking and and really um respect the flavor that you want to get out of that piece of steak or whatever that you might choose to have is to let it rest <laughs> a little bit you have to let it you can you talk a little bit about like why that's important because i'm going to take you back to thanksgiving <laughs> all right, here we are Thanksgiving. We've spent all this time with this turkey, right? We put that turkey in the oven, right? We are looking at it and we're, every time we look at it and open that oven door, right? Now the instructions say it's gonna be probably 20 minutes per pound and I've got a 10 pound turkey. So I know how long that's gonna be. That's 200 minutes, right? All right, and you divide that so, you know, that's yeah, like- Yeah, 20 minutes. <laughs> I know, you're like, hours. and then you stuff it, and it's going to be like, it's like you, never, you never stuff your turkey. You never stuff your turkey. Oh, stuff no, I your stuff my turkey, turkey daily. No, I'm just fine. Right. So, so you've got this turkey in the oven, right? And I'm going to take you just, here we are, because everybody makes this Thanksgiving. So you put your turkey in the oven, 350 degrees, and you know it's going to be for three hours. But you know what happens is, about every 15 minutes, you cannot resist by opening the oven door and looking at it and pulling out the rack and you baste it a little bit. Well, now my oven temperature is not at 300 degree, at 350 degrees anymore. Now it's down to 300 or 250. Then you push it back in and you do this a few times and you wonder why it isn't cooked at three hours. You have to take it out of the oven, put it on the cutting board or put it on your counter, close that oven door, maintain Very sorry. That's the, that's my business thumb. <laughs> So now you've cooked this beautiful turkey, right? You And you wanna carve it. You can't wait to carve it, and that's the problem. You really need to let that turkey sit for at least 30 minutes before you carve it. We've got a protein, right? We've got all these molecules. When molecules are hot, what are they doing? They're racing, right? When molecules are cold, they're soft, they're not moving, right? So we need to cool down this turkey so when we start carving it, all the juices don't end up on the cutting board. We okay. wanna keep the juices into the turkey. So turkey doesn't need to be hot. What needs to be hot? The gravy. Oh. oh. And our steak and all these things that, that we're so anxiously wanting to have it's hot. Protein, any protein. It has to be, it has to be just, it, it has to be closer to room temperature. It has to be warm because then you keep all those delicious juices in. Wow. I think it's like our health and our immunity, Dr. Gill, if we could uh, bring this back to like some, like how it all relates, at least in my perspective is, you know, we want to sizzle on the outside a little bit, like steak and turkey and have it like whatever, but we need to have the space to rest in order to take be, it out of the oven, you just take it out of the oven or we off need the to room? have just let rest, the rest in you order to be the best we can be and what we're meant to be. Like our, right. I, I wouldn't use the word juicy boot, that's inappropriate, but like the mo to withhold, I know Lenore, I just like I was in for um, <laughs> to, with, to hold in the yeah. what we're supposed to have to deliver and make what our our. Our well, until everybody can get cooking, I can just deliver to you. Yeah. Yes, so absolutely. Then we're going to get together and we're going to cook together and we'll build our community. 
So we're gonna uh, we're gonna have everything on the Facebook event page, uh, and there's also a YouTube channel which will have the links uh, for how to get hold of Lenore in terms of her website and email, and so that you can either order the ingredients or sign up for the classes or both, um, and uh, and start exploring this whole new world. So thank you. And she also thank will you. specialize and customize dietary, you know, right. like but for whatever you do. If you don't see what you're looking for give me a call and we can make specific dietary meals that are specific to your allergies, specific to your dietary needs, and just what you like. No, and it, you know what? I just must say that special orders make us smile. Oh, and, you're, and it's so affordable. I look at the price and go, well, how did she do that? <laughs> so. It's been such a pleasure. It really has. I'm so excited. It's a pleasure. I love you both. Thank you so much. And um, I'll be in tomorrow. I'll come and see what you're going on tomorrow because I'm always curious. <laughs> Listen, I hope when we can open our doors again, when we can actually have the impact that we want to have, that uh, at least at our Medispa and, and wherever we can bring our love and light to, that you know you, you can join us there. I and love to. I and would help love touch to. the people that we want, you know. I would love to. My pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone who is here watching today. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Thank be good. Be well. Be safe. Happy cooking. And thank maybe you. you'll be with us again on this whole thing. <laughs> so. Find a slot for me. <laughs> I think we might have one. <laughs> I lined up for you. but uh, All right. Good. Uh, thank you. Bye -bye. Who's I love you, Lenore. Thank tomorrow. You. Who's coming on tomorrow? Oh, sorry. Uh, vaginal rejuvenation. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to say, I'm supposed to announce that. You're right. <laughs> tomorrow is about at home vaginal rejuvenation that is FDA favored. So. All right. Good. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Bye bye. Pleasure. Bye. bye. Yeah. Whew. Sorry, I'm just trying to stop the whole recording. <laughs> we have three orders. We have three orders. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, wait, it was st I can still hear everybody. I'm trying to stop the recording. Sorry. Uh, and now. Um, dum, 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 dum.